literally processing a bunch of stuff from the garden. And when I say a bunch of stuff, I mean a fair amount, okay? I'm proud of what I've grown. This is my first year gardening. And so we have these tomatoes right here. We've got some plum tomatoes that we are going to make some marinara sauce with. And we'll probably eat some tonight and then we will put the rest in the freezer. I thought originally that I would grow stuff to can it, but our little garden doesn't produce enough for me to go through all that mess. But it produces enough that it's gonna be worth doing and it was really fun. I've learned a lot my first year of gardening. This is my harvest from this morning, which is not that big. But it's pretty good. I picked some of the tomatoes that are kind of yellow, orangey color, um, and that's what I did with all of the tomatoes that are in this cardboard box that we're going to process today. I'm having some issues with weather-related rot and with bugs out in the garden, and like I said, it's just my first year, so I'm just thankful to have something because at first I thought, oh no, all these tomatoes are going to be goners but we're gonna be able to salvage them. And I put these in this cardboard box last week and they have been in the cardboard box with the lid on for maybe four days now. And they ripened up just perfect. And there's some bad spots on them that I'm gonna to have to cut off and kind of work around. But for the most part, they're gonna be good to go. So we're over at the oven and I am just gonna go in with a knife and do a little X right at the bottom of all of these tomatoes that we have. And we're gonna put them on a baking sheet and let them go under the broiler. Maybe a minute or two, we'll keep a close eye on them. And that's gonna make the skin pucker up so that we can peel the skin right off of these tomatoes. If y'all have been following along um, with us here at this Asser House, you know that we are in the middle of remodeling this whole house and the kitchen has got a beautiful gaping hole right now. Look at it. Mm, just looks like something out of a magazine, right? But this is something that is definitely a process for me and my husband. We have done a lot of work in our first little home, but there are still plenty of things that still need to be worked on. But we live here and we have hosted people with this gaping hole and I've made videos with the gaping hole. Um, and I just want to encourage you that you don't have to have a picture perfect house to love your home and to host people and it's just a process. It's really easy when we look online at people remodeling their homes and um, a lot of times it's like short form content of somebody posting literally like a before and an after and everything's just perfect just like that. But a lot of times in real life it takes a little bit of time to get everything done. So we are still using this house just like we would if it was all finished and every single project was done because this is where we're at. And we ain't gonna let a hole in our kitchen stop us from having fun. I'm just gonna put them in the oven under that broiler. All right, and while those are under the broiler, I'm just gonna refill our little cardboard box. It's our Stetson hat box. And I'm gonna refill that with the tomatoes that I picked today. And in a couple days, these will be ripe and ready to use as well. All right, so here's what they're looking like after about two or three minutes. So we're gonna let these cool completely. And we're gonna work on our green beans while these are cooling. Now we love green beans in this house. and We've gotten a decent harvest so far. Um, I have been picking them as they're ready. And the problem is, is we only are getting like a handful. There goes one. A handful at a time. And I'm very thankful for everything that we've been able to grow. But when you're only getting small increments at a time, it really doesn't make sense to can any of this stuff. So I'm just freezing my green beans, which is super simple. And all I do is wash them and I break them and then I put them on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and I put them in the freezer until they're frozen solid individually into these little pieces. And then I put them in a freezer bag. And I find that this helps uh, to avoid like getting any ice crystals or freezer burn or anything like that. When you freeze them individually, and they freeze solid as one little green bean. 
they don't stick together either when you go to take them out of the freezer. And it's so easy to cook them whenever you're ready to use them. All I do is put mine in a strainer in the sink and then I let cold water run over them until they're thawed and it might take five minutes, maybe. And then they're ready to cook. So I put these in the freezer before we left to go on the road this weekend, but they're good and frozen. So I'm gonna put them in a little freezer bag and I'll pop them in the freezer and they'll be good whenever we need them. And then I think these I'm just gonna break up and actually cook tonight. I'm gonna make a chicken casserole. I'm gonna put green beans in it to try and sneak some veggies in on my husband. Chris does not like any veggies except green beans. And he'll eat some veggies if they're cooked in with other stuff, but green beans are the only ones that he'll eat like a scoop of green beans on his plate. Any other vegetable, he says, tastes like grass. So, <laughs> I try to sneak veggies in as much as I can to our meals. So, it's not much, but it's more than we had before we planted the garden, right? That's what I tell my husband when he says all this work for one bag of green beans. I say yes, because it's fun. So I'm just gonna get these broken up and set them aside for supper tonight. Well, looky there, about a cup of green beans. <laughs> It'll be just enough to add in our chicken casserole tonight to give us a little extra veg. But let's go over to these tomatoes over here. We started on peeling those, so those have been cooling. Excuse me. All right, so some of these are peeling easily, like this one's peeling pretty easily, but it only goes about halfway down the tomato. So I'm gonna pop these back under the broiler and just see if we can get them a little bit more toasty so that skin's gonna come off easier. Because otherwise, this is gonna take a hot minute and I don't really wanna stand here and peel tomatoes all day long. Okay, I see what I did wrong. See, this one was laying on its side and it's peeling like off in a total sheet, which is what we want and the others I had facing up. So I'm just gonna pop these back under the broiler for just a little bit longer to see if we can get that skin peeled off any easier. So I know I am making this marinara sauce, but I think I'm gonna put that in the fridge for tomorrow. And while our tomatoes are back under the broiler, I'm gonna put just a chicken breast in the crock pot for tonight's supper. And this is the easiest way to cook chicken. You just do a little bit of chicken broth. I freeze my chicken after I buy it, um, just cause our schedule's crazy and we're on the road so much. And so I just pull it out of the freezer, put it straight into the crock pot and I cook it for about four hours on high and it pulls apart perfect. You can add seasonings in there or whatever you like, but I'll season mine when I'm done before I put it in our chicken casserole. Let's check our tomatoes. Yep, I think that that is what we were looking for with the skin. Yeah, that has puckered up a whole lot better than before. I'm not sure if you can tell, but the skin is just pulling away now. So we'll see if this goes any easier. Look at that. That's what we want. In this pot right here, I have just got some olive oil, garlic, and onions that have been sauteing. And I've got all my tomatoes peeled, so I'm going to start adding those into the pot. And I'm actually gonna just use my immersion blender once I get everything in here to puree it all up. So I'm just gonna go through with my little knife and core these tomatoes. Slice them in half and add them right into our pan. Now I'll tell you what, that was not very fun to 
peel all these tomatoes. <laughs> that took a lot longer than I expected it to. So that would have to be like a group project if you had a big old yard full of tomatoes. So we have got all of our tomatoes in here with our onions and garlic. These have been cooking down just a little bit and I am gonna go in with this immersion blender. This is one of my favorite tools to use in the kitchen because you don't have to use like a food processor or a blender. You can just put it right into the pot or the bowl that you're working in and it just blends it up. I absolutely love this. Now, if you don't have an immersion blender, you can absolutely just use your regular blender or your food processor to get that all nice and smooth. So as you can see, it's pretty thin right now. And so I'm just gonna season it and then we're gonna let this simmer and cook down until it thickens up. After I added my seasonings, I put the lid on the pot right there and I'm just gonna leave it on low and let it simmer for like an hour and I'll just check it and stir it. I'm really excited because it's made a big old pot of sauce and that'll probably be four meals a piece for me and Chris. So eight meals total from these tomatoes. So that's a win for a first time gardener. All right, for a chicken casserole, it's not gonna be anything crazy fancy. I don't know if y'all grew up eating chicken casserole, but it was something that my grandmother made, something my mama made, and we ate chicken casserole probably twice a month at least, maybe three times a month in our house. And we were out on the road last weekend eating out and there's just something so comforting and homey about chicken casserole. So that's what we're gonna have tonight. So once I've got all my chicken chopped up, I'm just gonna add that into a bowl. Now I'm gonna take our green beans that we broke from earlier today from the garden and I'm just gonna cut them up into little bitty pieces. That way there's no big bites of green beans. And then just add that to my chicken. I feel like some folks are either big casserole fans or they can't stand the casserole because they don't like all their food mixed up into one meal, but I grew up eating casseroles and they're so easy and you can just put it all into one baking dish and get it cooking up. There's our oven ready. I've got the oven preheated to 375 degrees and this casserole will bake for about 30 minutes. And then to our chicken and green beans, I'm gonna add one can of Campbell's cream of chicken soup. I really love using the cream of chicken with herbs, but I don't have that on hand, but I would definitely recommend it if you can get your hands on that, but we can always just add in whatever seasonings we need. I'm gonna add in one more can of cream of chicken soup and just give that a good stir. I'm gonna add in some salt and pepper. in just a little bit of Italian seasoning. And then some onion powder. And give that a good mix. So all you gotta do is add this into your baking dish. In my opinion, the best part of chicken casserole is the topping. So we top ours with Ritz crackers, but you could do stuffing mix. That is really, really good on top too. You could also take old bread and cut it into croutons 
and top it with croutons. My mama used to do all kinds of stuff with whatever we had on hand, and so that's how I do it as well. All you're gonna do is take those crackers and just crumble them up all over the top of your casserole. Just spread those crackers out evenly on top. And you can pour melted butter over top of this, which is what most recipes call for. But honestly, I think that it browns up just as good without it, and it makes me feel a little bit better about it. Because this is definitely not the healthiest meal in the whole wide world, but it sure is comforting and delicious, especially when you haven't been home. So we're gonna pop this in the oven, and then we'll have supper. All right, as soon as this chicken casserole is done, the kitchen is closed for the day, which means it's time to give our sauce one last stir. I'm gonna turn the heat off. This has been cooking now for about two hours and it has made our house smell like a dream. Honestly, I almost changed my mind about an hour in and said, never mind, we're gonna have spaghetti tonight. But the chicken was already in the crock pot, so we'll use this for lunch tomorrow. But I'm gonna let this cool down completely, and then I will divide it out after it's absolutely cooled into, I'll do some in containers and some in freezer bags. I'll portion it out, and I will get this in the freezer, and we will have sauce whenever we need it right on hand, y'all. And I'm so proud that this came right out of our little garden. I have our chicken and green bean casserole out of the oven. It smells so good. So excited to eat that tonight. And then I've got our sauce pulling down in some jars. So we have two of these jars full of our tomato sauce. And then I have this container that's gonna go into the freezer. And then I have this half of a jar that I'm gonna use for uh, Chris's lunch tomorrow. So I hope that y'all loved this video. I know this was nothing fancy, but um, we made this channel to let y'all in on our everyday lives and hopefully encourage you um, to make the most with what you got. And we definitely did that today. And I am just thrilled that we have been able to harvest some stuff from our garden and put it to good use because I really didn't know how it would turn out. But I wanna thank you again for being here. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and we will see you on the next one. Bye, y'all.